Hey everyone, it's Gnome from the Hateful Gnomes Music Hut. I'm here with my good buddy, Jake the Hater, and we're bringing you a bi-weekly music podcast for all your heavy metal needs. Tell them about it, Jake. We are here to have our horns up. We are staying heavy. That is right. Even B-Word is producing behind the scenes, turning his mic off. But you know what? We are going to give the fans something bigger, badder, and fucking bolder. Tune in bi-weekly, a Spreaker Prime podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mike. And I'm Tabby. And we're we're Happy Happy Hour Hour Podcast. Podcast. You're listening to Bleach Bros Podcast. Thank you for all the dirty talk and come back and get sanitized. Welcome into the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is B-Word, and as usual, I am here with my good buddy Jake. And Jake, before we get this episode started, I just have to tell you, my man, I hate technology. Uh, me too. It's been frustrating tonight, uh, to say the least, behind the curtain. I think that we have done this intro six times. I think six so. Six times yep. due to lag, latency, uh, internet, uh, learning new systems. I mean, here's the good and the bad, right, B-Word? We're now a Spreaker Prime podcast, right? Yes, we are. So we have moved, and we are we are learning new platforms and stuff. But with that comes the woes of yep. you know, as me as the great philosopher Mace would say, "Mo money, mo problems." That's true. That's true. And as uh, and as Coolio would say, um, nothing because Coolio is dead. He's dead. So <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm so I mean, I mean, I want to feel bad for laughing, but I don't, dude. No. I don't. No. I don't. Dude, this this so from beh- from a behind the curtain thing again, and the audience, uh, if you guys are listening to this and you're still bearing with us, thank you, uh, because without doing it this way, I don't think that we would have got through the episode. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would be so much easier one day if we hit the big time. We live in the same city, we have our own studio, you know, go through there. But for the whole purposes of this, we're going to get used to it. Uh, and, and it's not a Spreaker thing. Let me be let me be candid. So for those of you out there that are thinking that we're talking about Spreaker, we're not. We're, we have a host uh, recording program, and we transferred to a new host recording program. And it seems like one of our internets, both of our internets, my internet, whatever it is, just isn't hitting the dot. Uh, didn't find the G spot, didn't find the clitoris. And so it was disappointed. And we got booted off of that platform and now we're on a different platform our old platform to be able to record this so we're getting it done my man oh we'll get through it i mean i just felt bad for you b-word because i mean you be honest you do a lot behind the scenes so people know um i mean you produce you do the artwork i i, I really have a hard time finding what i'm doing right now but uh i mean <laughs> you um you do a lot and i can see the frustration in your face just building like fuck Fuck, yeah. we have to do this. We have to do this. And you're still pulling audio tracks from the other platform to make sure that we have the stuff that we were recording as well tonight. Yep. Yep. So it, it'll be fun, though. But, you know, what a what a better opportunity to talk about murders and vile things than when technology is going bad. Because you know what they say is that if you're going to marry a spouse, like you, you should sit with them during like rush hour traffic or you should... Mm-hmm deal with them on a dial-up connection first just to kind of see what kind of human they are and so that's kind of the thing man like tonight tonight tested my patience we're there were you gonna kill me is that what you're trying to say no you're you're too far away dude i can't put i think we would do good in traffic together we've sat in traffic together i think we're yeah fine i think it's because we would we would harass the dude with the bumper sticker that says coexist i'm gonna well Did were you so my neighbors have told me I'm a fast driver, as you know, and like a little scared when when I was driving you back from Seattle, were you a little scared? No, but I did understand that you were a fast driver. Like, like there is something in your foot that weighs a lot more than your entire body. (laughs) It just happens. Like when you were passing in and out of traffic, like I'm, I'm I'm actually a little shocked that without like a radar detector that you don't get as many tickets as you as you know how many I I think you have any. I don't think you have. I don't have any. I don't have any, dude. Yeah. I, I I have one ticket. I got a DUI years ago, so I went full gusto, um, and haven't got one since. Yeah, I'm not a. Sp- I speed everywhere, um, but I I do this. I'm going to tell people a little secret. If I see a cop, I just keep speeding by. I never hit the brakes because that's admitted to guilt right there. Yep, it's I true. I just keep going as fast as fucking possible. How, but how see, fast over the speed limit do you like to go? Like just in general. 
uh freeway i'm a i'm an 85 90 guy <laughs> against what speed limit 70 yeah see that's what i that's what i thought like so i have this little app on my phone with my insurance right like that mm-hmm. gives me discounts based on my good driving <laughs> and uh i i came back home and my my discount went up like like not up in a good way like my discount went down because went of down. my bad driving so habits yeah. because i was riding with you and i forgot to change it so oh really yeah it was i'm it the was cause fun. of all your problems see look at that well, b-word and the other the other thing was is that it said that um i was on the phone the whole time when i when i wasn't like <laughs> like you and i were actually talking and i was playing around with my phone ever occasionally and doing whatever yeah it was a it was a very bad system of uh, of measurement there but yeah, that's I, why i don't use those i'm gonna tell you right now that is a secret i do yeah. not use those things because i know that they will catch me on something and just be like, you're never going to get insurance. Like, <laughs> Here, here's my thing, though. Like, they tell you that you'll get anywhere between like one percent to twenty percent, which is the insurance company that I, that I work for and also um, have. And so, at worst, I'm still getting a one percent discount. So, what do I really care? Like, a discount's a discount. Like, I, I you know, I just don't want them I, to I know just, anything about me. I don't want anything them to know yeah. anything about me. But there's there's a lot of new vehicles that already have those chips in them anyway. Like I don't know if your Jeep has these in them, but but if you're gonna buy a new vehicle, it's got the information in it anyway. So the only oh, thing yeah, that really yeah. keeps you from that is if you had an older vehicle, you know, with yeah, chips I'm and not, shit in it. I'm not Alex Jones in it in life. Like I'm not thinking like, you know, I, I'm not like I love when people are like, Oh, you can't have this because they're tracking you. And I'm like, dude, like so our, my, one of my neighbors was talking the other day about like ring. Uh, doorbell apps or whatever they're like don't don't use those because they can they can log in and see what you're doing i'm like dude nobody fucking cares that you go out in your underwear once a month and pick up an amazon package like you're not that important it's the same argument i've used like if anybody asks you what kind of bird you are you're not a fucking hawk if you were in the renaissance fair you're not a knight you're somebody cleaning a toilet or a bread maker you're not that important that the government wants to know what b word is doing on his front porch at a sunday at 3 p.m in the afternoon mind you i still don't want him to know what i'm doing in my life but i'm also not freaking out like alex jones as i'm saying so yeah no i'm with that's my two cents no, and and your two cents are are accepted here. This is uh, this isn't the stone safe house, but it is a safe house nonetheless. It's a sanitized safe house. We're gonna call it. Hey, look, we're gonna coin that. Fucking copyright that shit. We're good to go. Spreaker Prime sanitized safe house. Safe. I can't even fucking say. You can't even go. say that, dude. You can't even say that no. one times fast. No, I know I, right. I can't. So speaking of safe houses, tonight we were gonna talk about. Um, I, I guess we're gonna get a little heavy. But we're gonna talk about serial killers, dude. Well, I think what started this was is that you were asking me about Dahmer, so the ne- yeah. the new Netflix documentary Dahmer, and I hadn't watched it, but I think you had watched the whole thing when we were talking. Yes. And, uh, uh, dude, it was a rough one for me to get through, but let me, let me ask you this. Like, I want a Jake the Hater review on this one because it was that slow burn that I think you like and, and you mm-hmm. enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the performance was outstanding. Like, there's no issues with the performance. But what did you think of it overall? It was a nice slow burn. It had good buildup. Um, it was a few too many episodes too long. I always feel most shows are. I understand filler episodes. But in the day and age when you have streaming and binging and you're not waiting week in and week out, especially for a story that's a true story where you know the ending, right? It's not like, and I'm just going to throw another show out there, like She-Hulk, where we're waiting for Daredevil and you can have fillers in between that. Um, I don't need all the filler crap. Right. Um, it was a little harder to get through just because I don't think it was like gratuitous and gross and stuff like that. I understood the the thing, but I also think we're almost a little dommered out. If that makes sense. There's been so much about him lately. There's been so many movies and stuff. And so you're like, if, if, if you've, if you watch a lot of documentaries like I do and you do, you've already knew most of the stuff going in. So it's like, okay, cool to see that. But I also felt when you got closer to the end, um, they were ready to end the show, I think, at like episode six. That's what it and felt then like. They, and then they did three extra episodes to sort of showcase the the victims or people around him. And the show felt like an episode about, I mean, the episodes were about them, but like more of a background of that, which was a little bit enjoyable, but not needed in my opinion. And I'm not saying I want to send, you know, like, go oh let's all hail Dahmer and stuff like that but I don't know like when episode six ended 
if you notice, it didn't do the next episode right up on the screen right away. And the way the credits rolled, it felt like that was the end. And then they Netflix made them do those extra three. Wait, so because I noticed that and yeah. I didn't put that together like it just didn't get into the next episode. Yes. I, I didn't even notice that until you. Put, I, well, I mean, I noticed I it. that feeling. Yeah, I noticed it as a viewer, but I didn't put that together until we're talking tonight. Yeah, because the next episode was the deaf one, which was a hard episode to watch. I mean, it was interesting. It was I love when um, directors and stuff try something new. But the problem is when you have that much. When you're trying to put somebody in somebody else's shoes, it doesn't always work. There's the appreciative nature of it, but it's in and out. It was so quiet. It was a little disturbing in the sense of like, okay, I'm reading and I don't mind subtitles and stuff like that. But it was it was it was a hard watch because of that. Like, I appreciate they were trying to show us what it is like to be deaf and stuff, but it was too much. And then the next one um, where it went into his neighbor, it was a good, interesting story. But like I said, I think it could have ended a little earlier. Yeah. Um, it was drawn out. Um, it, it was a good show. Was it the greatest show ever? No. Is it one of the best killer documentaries I've seen in a while? Yeah, I'll say that. No, um, I, I, I will disagree with you on that, but I'm interested okay. to hear your explanation. Um, I, I don't know. I just felt like uh, I think acting was the biggest thing. I think the portrayal was was done so well that I felt like he was the killer. And I guess that's why. Um, So to me, it was because also it's a it's a fictionalized nonfiction documentary. Right. So it's acted out unlike other documentaries where it's just like they're playing tapes or something. Because I mean, I love I'll just say this. I love the Ted Bundy tapes. I'm a big like I really got into the Ted Bundy story. Um, And I like that. I don't always need somebody to act it out. But I thought I thought he did a great job. No, I definitely think he did a great job. Um, he, he, the actor knocked it out of the park. I mean, absolutely knocked it out of the park. There's there's no way that you can watch that and say that he didn't embody who Jeffrey Dahmer was, right? Like, like it was incredible. It was, it was done really well as far as all of that goes. Uh, Evan Peters was certainly a lot better than I thought he was going to be. I think the thing for me was is like like we've talked about already for uh, for me for for those that I've talked to about this it was a slow burn it really felt like um the story had a hard time moving forward at times and then those filler episodes and I felt like the filler episodes were in those times that it that you had just got done waiting for the story to move forward then all of a sudden you have a filler episode and I really just wanted to get there it was like watching um, season five of, of The Walking Dead or whatever that was. It was just very, very tough to get through it. Um, there were things in it that I thought were were interesting or at least thought provoking. Like I never really researched or, um, you know, saw any type of portrayal on his dad and mom. And I think that that was interesting. Um, Molly Ringwald, I didn't even recognize her, to be honest with you. I think that there was a lot of prosthetics there. Um, so I think for what they were shooting for, as far as the, the flavor of the documentary, as far as the portrayals and the acting, I think that they nailed that. But I think for me, it's, it's one of the, like, I almost have to say in a completely different vein, this for me is like the Elvis movie that just came out. Okay. The actor who portrayed Elvis was fucking awesome. He nailed it on every single level. The problem was, I just felt like the story was way too much for what it should have been. And especially when you get to the court scenes and all that, like, I don't know that you had to have all of that in Dahmer. Okay. Um, but I mean, if for somebody who's a true crime fanatic or somebody who likes that kind of stuff, I mean, I would at least recommend watching it just to get through it and then mm-hmm. make your own opinion on it. But um, yeah, it was, I don't know. For me, it was just kind of hard to watch. Well, I will thank you for watching it. I mean, um, I agree with you in the sense because it was funny. I watched it. I watched it right away and I was like, oh, a lot of people are going to like this. And then I'm seeing like other people come out and like, that's boring as hell. And this and I'm like, oh, really? I guess it's just another skinny tiger fatty dragon thing. <laughs> like, I mean, he didn't Ralph Boner it. I mean, at least there was that and it was right? it was enjoyable. Yeah. But I, I, I agree. My wife had a hard time watching it. So I'll agree with you there. Like she was like, it's just too slow and there's not much going on. And she's like, I'd rather watch something else about his story. Like, so, you know, the portrayal where I could see more. Is there a um, is there a docu series on murderers or, or or serial killers that you really enjoy? Like, do you have a top three? As I said, I'll, I'll say Ted Bundy tapes is probably number one. Um, okay. I really I really liked that. I like 
I like when they break that down. I guess, I guess to me, I either want it so realistic like that to where it's just the mm-hmm. tapes and they do that, or mm-hmm. I want it where it's like uh, the show Mind Hunter. Okay. About okay. the FBI, where yep. they have an actor come in and portrayal, give a good portrayal of a killer. Like Blackbird is another great one, right? The guy yeah, who played the Blackbird murderer, that's great. Good. The problem I have is I went and I, I wanted to find out more about that killer. And then I go watch it and the guy, like he did a better job being the killer than the killer, if that makes sense. Like he doesn't yeah. sound like that. Doesn't, you know what I mean? And it was just awkward to me after that. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I, I, I can't, I have a hard time listing the top three. Uh, just to be honest, because I, I'm not, I like true crime and I watch it and mainly because my wife got me into it. Um, right. And when it comes on, I'll throw it on, but I'm not like the guy that goes and goes, Oh, there's a killer. I need to watch this. Like, it's something I just don't like to really centralize. If that makes sense. No, I agree. It's a, it's one of those topics that I don't necessarily want to celebrate. Like I don't want to celebrate mm-hmm. anybody, you know, murdering somebody. Um, to me, I prefer more of a documentary than I do a portrayal. Okay. I, I I really want to be told what happened and told the story rather than seeing it in an entertainment fashion. Okay. Um, so like I grew up on like uh, unsolved unsolved uh, unsolved mysteries, unsolved yeah. mysteries, and um, like the Justice Files and uh, you know stuff like that. And so I prefer documentaries like that. Like where there are people that are being interviewed that tell you about things that are going on, that tell you their side of things or that were what they saw or what they heard or, and then, you know, there's this overarching narrator or overarching host that kind of leads you through that. And that's where on Netflix, I think that they've done a pretty killer job on some of these things, no pun intended, but like making a murderer the first season. I actually really enjoyed making a murderer. Mm-hmm. There were several filler episodes in that. And I think just in general, there's a lot of filler episodes. But making a murderer at least had had the ability to like not only give you that slow burn, but it, it was also like that you're watching this injustice happen to this man. Mm-hmm. And then you're seeing what's going on. And like, did he murder her? Did he not murder her? Like th- th- it left a lot of questions, but it kind of left it to the audience. Now, the def- the prosecution will argue that they defended him through the documentary series. So you also have to kind of look at some of the bias that might be in there too. But I thought that that was a good one, but I don't know that that would make my, make my top. If I were to, if I were to have a top, um, I did watch sins of our mother recently on Netflix. I think that I watched was that three, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a three episode docuseries. Mm-hmm. That lady's a fucking creepo. Yeah. Straight up creepo. I people who kill their kids like I just I can't wrap my head around it and that just I don't know man like that's just not there's nothing redeemable about that and so it's it's kind of a hard watch but again it was an entertaining um documentary um but probably the the most entertaining one that I saw that made me mad was The Keepers on Netflix have you ever okay. watched that one no so the keepers is about this Catholic, I think it's a Catholic school um, and they have nuns that are there okay. and it ultimately follows this nun that got murdered. And so it's this trying to figure out what happened as far as the, the nuns murder goes in the, in the investigation into the murderer, they actually found that a lot of the girls that were attending the school were actually violated sexually. And so it opened up this whole other, other box, case yeah. And so, again, there was several filler episodes in that. I think it was like 16 episodes or some god-awful amount. There's just a lot in there. But, man, I kept watching episode after episode after episode. And I would get madder and madder and madder all the way through it. But that was probably the best documentary that I've watched on serial killers. See, I, I, I've watched, I just watched the Gacy tapes. And I watched the Ted Bundy tapes. But, see, then also I watched... Um, What's that one with Zach Efron, like extremely wicked oh. and truly vile or whatever, where he's Ted Bundy. Yeah. And it was, yeah. eh, it was okay. And then I watched uh, my friend Dahmer, which actually just came out in 2017 too. Mm-hmm. So like I said, we were, I think we're Dahmered out, which that actor did a great job too. Like he did a great job portraying him. Um, I think this one was better, but also this one seemed more realistic than my friend Dahmer. That one seemed more like a production movie, if that makes sense, even though this is a production, you get yeah. what I'm saying though? Like, yeah, 
that felt like, okay, we have an hour and a half to do that or two hours we have to do this and let's do it, but let's Hollywoodize it. This one felt like, okay, let's try to keep it more real. This reminded me more of the OJ Simpson yeah, um, trial with, series uh, they did. Ross. Yeah, with, with Ross, Ross where he was the friends. shitty lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And wasn't it Cuba Gooding Jr. that was yes. OJ Simpson? See, I, I enjoyed so. that. I actually enjoyed that one. That one that one was interesting, but that was more like a court drama. Yeah, to that's me well, that's that's why I won't list it. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you because there's there's some that it's like okay, like it's interesting and you get through it, and it, yeah, there's technically a murder in it, but you know, like right. what's that other one on Netflix that's don't fuck with cats? Oh, I love that one. Love that one where I the people on the internet were one. sleuths and they figured that out. Yeah, and, yeah, Bebop and Rocksteady or whatever their names were that were you know yeah, just the, yeah. internet sleuthing about you know this dude that killed cats on the internet that and actually that one's probably one of my favorites to be honest with you i think i've watched that one twice yeah that's a and good they one. actually I caught mean, the dude they caught the dude which was like crazy to me these internet have too much time just, on their hands man yeah but no i mean behind man. the curtain behind the curtain this 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 all came up too not just because of the Dahmer thing but uh we we did an interview on the hateful gnome podcast and i learned the name of a song by the band gray bush was yep. named after a serial killer and my jaw dropped to the floor because I was just like, holy crap, I was not expecting that answer. And you know me, I wasn't like, I just, I'm just not about serial killers. I understand the fascination. Like the biggest thing for me, B word in these is always finding it odd that there's women that are in love with these dudes. Oh yeah. In jail yeah. and writing them letters. I will yeah. never understand that. Like, like uh, Scott Peterson, as an example, Scott Peterson killed his wife, Lacey, right? Yeah. Um, he's in San Quentin or wherever he's at in California. That dude gets love letters all the time, bro. All the time. I think he's actually married now. Like, I don't even understand it. Yeah, what? 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 What level of toxic trait does it be when it's like, he will only be with me. He killed the last one, but I'll be the one he did. Is it like, is it, do you think it's like a prideful thing? Like, I'll be the one he won't kill? No, I think it's a, I think it's a common complex that a lot of people have that I'll be the one to fix him. Okay. It, 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 but it baffles me, dude. Like Charles Manson, as an example, like that dude had fan mail. Like even in Dahmer, they were, they were showing that he had fan mail coming in. Yeah, and women honestly, in money and yeah, yeah, just to, just to like have him draw something for him or, or autograph something. Like, I don't know what the fascination is. And I know that, I know that it, just going back to the Hateful Gnomes Music Hut real quick, we had uh, Tyler from Graybush on there and their song is called Roadneck. Mm-hmm. And it's named after, um, oh my gosh, uh, Ed Kepner. Ed, yeah. And basically, where he would do things to people's extremities. And ultimately, like, I remember sitting there, and, and anytime in the Hateful Gnome, I, I turn off my mic and I turn off my camera and I just sit there and listen and I make sure that audio is good and whatever. And I watched your face and your face did the exact same thing that my face did. Like, our, mm-hmm. our, our jaw just slowly started to drop. And it took a while for us, <laughs> for yeah. both of us to like lift that back up. And here's Gnome like, oh yeah, he's in my top five, blah, blah. And I'm like, Gnome's going to murder somebody. Like this is going <laughs> to happen. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think that, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's just for me, it's not something, I mean, I guess, because we're going to do this. I mean, and I guess let's just get into that part. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to word this. Beaver. This is a first okay. for us on the show. So we've talked about, so, okay. So let me, let me just talk about what's on our rundown. So on the next part of our rundown, we have worst serial killers. So we're going to talk, we don't necessarily have a number on it, but we want to talk about, okay, to us subjectively, who are the worst serial killers, which is, which is an uncomfortable thing because again, we don't want to celebrate these individuals or even recognize what they did as a good thing. And then we're going to talk about some, some fictional serial killers, which I think is a lot easier for us to talk about. Yes. But but going into serial killers, I mean, I don't know what your list looks like. I don't know which one you thought about, um, and we can kind of get into this here in a minute. But in my mind, I wanted to keep it U.S. centric um, mm-hmm. because I feel like I'm more familiar with that. I wanted to kind of talk about things that I know. Like I don't want to talk about somebody from the 1700s. Like that just that doesn't make any sense to me, right? But as I was starting to kind of do some research for this, like I don't remember where I heard it. But if you look at certain characters on TV, like like Jax from Sons of Anarchy, with how many people he's killed, is he mm-hmm. a serial killer? Um, mob hitmen, are they serial killers? See, I look like, at it differently. <clears throat> yeah. And the, the, here's the, dis, dis, the distinction, B-word. 
is the people that are on these serial killer lists and that, that got proven is like there was an enjoyment out of it. I think mob people, it's like they're doing it for a different. I'm not defending like it, but duty. I'm saying it's like a duty or a job or it's like something else to them. And these people, it's a compulsion, right? Like they need it. Okay. Like I don't think okay. a mob person's like, oh, I need to go kill somebody tonight. I mean, there could be. I'm not right. saying, that. but right. but I feel like Jack's on. If you're just going this and this is fictional, but he's like, okay somebody's messing with the crew we got to kill him it's not like they're sitting around planning out like man i can't wait to kill this buddy and cut, chop up their arms and legs and jerk off with it later and all this other right weird shit right right i think that's right. the other like, thing we put yeah. with serial killers there's that extremeness to it i think it's 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 weird that it gets lost in translation that they don't just go kill people anymore too when you hear about these people that are on these lists it's like and they did what they made road yeah neck? what like holy yeah. shit like what well i mean just look at Dahmer. i mean he would keep heads in the freezer and he would boil the flesh off of the bones and eat it like my man that oh i i dude i i will try a lot of different foods at least once you couldn't get me to try a human like that's just no <laughs> that's just not gonna happen um, no. and, and it's, and it's funny too, because we have, you know, I, here in Northern Nevada, we've got Donner Lake and Donner Pass, um, on the way to California and the Donner party were, were cannibals more or less out of necessity, right? Because they had that big storm that came through. I, I, I think I'd die of starvation. I, I couldn't do that. Um, I, I'm going to agree with you. I, <laughs> I did. I, and I wasn't trying to think about it. Like, think about it. I, I think it's just, it's an obvious answer for me. Like, yeah, not going to happen. I remember there was, um, I don't remember what it was, but I watched another document series about this guy on the dark web who found a guy in a chat room and they got together and he goes, I want to eat you. And the guy's like, yeah, I'll let you eat me. I don't, I don't I've got to, I got to try to figure it out. But these two guys ended up meeting and the one let him drug him and kill him and eat him. And they filmed it and did everything all live. And then the guy got busted. But I'm just thinking like, what goes through somebody's mind with that? Like what? I mean, and I'm, I'm of sound mind, obviously, in the sense that I don't think those ways or anything. Right. Um, I mean, can I ask you this before we get into it? Have you ever been around anybody that you sort of had a suspicion, a suspicion or like, oh, felt like oh, you were around yeah. somebody? So I don't know that I've ever been around a murderer. Okay. So let me put it that way. Okay. Um, but I've been around people that it wouldn't shock me if they went on a tear. Like, you know, we've, we've talked about Kermit on, on the podcast before. Okay. And Kermit is one of those people that I feel like would kill people and go on this serial rage. I just don't know that he would be able to pull a Dahmer or he, he wouldn't be able to pull a Ted Bundy because I just don't think he's smart enough. Smart enough to do it. Yeah. But I do think that he is, he has the capability to at least harm somebody. He's, he's more like Lenny from of mice and men. Oh, it's so soft, George. It's so soft, right? Yeah. Like I just, I feel like he's a strong art heart on that, and and that's where, I, it, it's it's really hard for me. Like I don't talk to Kermit anymore for that reason. So there are people that I have been around. There's actually somebody, a former customer of mine. Okay, now I've talked before in in uh, on the show that I used to work for banks, right? Mm -hmm. Well, as I was a, as I was working for a bank, I was a, I was a bank manager. Um, at one of the major banks here in town and uh, I had this couple come in and one, one of the guys is a DJ and he's a local DJ. He goes to a lot of the different bars and he'll do karaoke nights and all that sort of stuff. Right. And I've known him first. I've known him for several, several years. And all of a sudden he meets this lady and this lady is, you know, they're, they're going hot and heavy. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're getting married and, and it seems on the surface, like everything's fine. Right. Well, one night, one day, one night, I don't know what time of day it was, uh, she gets arrested by the FBI and goes it goes to Arizona. So I live in Nevada. She gets uh, goes to Arizona to stand trial for the murder of her college roommate. Holy shit. And this lady's like 50 some odd years old, right? Now, mind you, I didn't know that that was the reason that this was happening, okay? okay. And so what I... <laughs> What I what happened was her dad started coming in, sending wire transfers to her attorneys and all this sort of stuff. Right. The husband comes in and he's talking about, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this happened. She's being set up, blah, 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 blah. Come to find out, my dude, she had already been to prison for killing her ex-boyfriend. OK, like I'm just telling you, I would have never put that label on this woman. She never came across to me that this was who it was. 
And uh, that's probably the closest that I've ever been to one of these circumstances. I had a coworker actually who was um, friends with Lacey Peterson. And oh, like okay. they went to high school together. They had kids right around the same time or were, were pregnant right around the same time, I should say. Um, and like they knew Scott, they knew all that sort of stuff. Like that's close to home for them, right? You and I have a mutual friend who is also, um, uh, who's, who's, ex-spouse was was affiliated with a with a lady who died by at the hands of her husband like it's just sometimes it does get a little close to home my man sometimes it's just kind of right there and i can't i personally can't understand unless it's like your heart like it's retaliatory like if somebody did something to my kid and ruined her life literally for the rest of her life like she's got to suffer the rest of her life like i think i could kill somebody in that circumstance but i wouldn't right. go and kill somebody if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I see. I have two stories like that. One, one speaks to that right out the gate. So I had a, I had a close friend. I don't know if it was a drunk night, a high night, something like that, or just, just a moment of clarity. I'll put it that way where we were sitting together and we just finished watching the movie, Mr. Brooks. Oh, okay. Yeah. uh, yeah. Kevin Costner and Dane Cook. And uh, I, the whole reason I watched that movie is I'm a huge Dane Cook fan. I don't care. Um, the Nickelback of comedy. Um, and at the end of it, this friend of mine who will remain nameless at the time looks over at me and goes, Hey man, we're the smartest of our two friends. And I just looked at him and I went, yeah. And he goes, well, I've done some research and you can get away with murder. If you know, you know what I mean? Like you, like there's a proven like theory, like snipers, right in America, they say you can snipe two people and pretty probably get away with it. Like if you do certain things, I don't know those things, but you know, there's those, 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 um, those stupid, uh, internet like like, rules that you learn and theories or statistics right or whatever so he continues talking and is like yeah man like why don't we try to do something like that and at the moment i was like okay whatever but then i realized i don't know if they're joking or not so i sat there and i looked and i went and i i did that whole thing where it's like talking off the ledge right yeah i was like well uh okay like well how are you gonna choose a victim and he was like, well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you'll I was like, okay, well, let me ask it this way. Can you kill somebody you're close to? He goes, no, no, I couldn't get away with that. I'm like, okay. Could you kill somebody that, you know, you're mad at or anything? He goes, no. And I was like, so it has to be, to be a random person. He's like, yeah. And I said, okay, well, what random person? How are you going to choose that? Well, I don't know. I don't just dislike people. I'm like, okay. So then no, this whole thing is going out the window. We, you can't do it. And it was just a, it was an interesting conversation. Cause I've, like I said, I've never thought of that. And to this day, I don't know how serious they were or not. Um, but it was it was weird, right? It was a weird moment. The other one was there was a guy I worked with that I am still convinced to this day was psychotic, and was he, or is is okay. Uh, we worked together for like five years or so, right? Mm-hmm. He was a big giant man, and I remember when he would get mad, he would hold his finger in front of his mouth, like you know, close his eyes and like shake and stop and have to pause, and like he would just get mad at anything, right? And uh, we all worked together and he would just get mad at people about things and call people out. And like, cause there was rules on the, you know, where I was working in the sales industry at that time. And some people abided, it, some didn't. And one night we were all working and we were going to go to a buddy's house at the end, you know, have some brews and talk and stuff. And so he walked by and overheard us and goes, Hey, I never get invited to anything. And so one of the new guys working goes, yeah, why don't you show up? And he goes, okay. And we're thinking, yeah, he's not going to show up. Right. Well, he did. And we're all like, he shows up and he's got that 12 pack of beer and we're all in the house. We're like, oh crap, like he's here. So we let him in, you know, of course we're going to at this point and we're all sitting outside drinking and stuff. And we're telling stories about high school, you know, and stuff. And I was talking about when I threw my arm out and how I didn't really like my baseball coach at the time. And I'll never forget. He looks over at me and goes, that guy really pissed you off. I said, yeah. He goes, did you ever want to kill him? And I was like, oh, like thinking like, I was like, yeah, dude, fuck that guy. He goes do you want to? <laughs> and I stopped for a minute. He goes, cause I have a list and anybody who has wronged me is one day going to get it. Like Steve and, Buscemi putting his lipstick on. And all of a sudden I look over and he gets up. He goes, well, that's time for me to go. And he leaves. Oh my God. I swear to God, I brought him a Reese's peanut butter cup packet the next day. And he walked up and goes, how did you know this is my favorite? And I realized at that point I was not on his list, but that was one of the scariest, <laughs> weirdest moments ever. Cause dude, the look in his eyes was like, yeah. And uh, it was awkward. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. No, it, it's, 
the so I was in a in a diversity training before it was actually diversity training. Like, you know, it's basically the same thing now, but it when it was kind of coming up. And they showed us these photos of people and and it was basically who would you trust, right? And so you would look at this person versus that person. And so everybody in the audience had to choose somebody, right? So A or B. And you went through 10 of these scenarios. And 70 or 80% of these people were murderers. They were serial killers. And of course, you know, I don't memorize these people's faces, right? So you're going based off of looks and what the impression is off of the looks. And so the vast majority of the audience uh, chose the murderers over the other people who were, you know, um, CEOs or they were monks or they were, you know, people who actually do things in the world, right? And so then you also look at people like Ted Bundy or even like Jeffrey Dahmer, for that matter, where they have this very, very high intellect. Like, I think that Jeffrey Dahmer's portrayed as kind of like this special or slow kind of guy. I think he was extremely smart, like not, not brilliant. I just think that he had a huge wit to him in a sense where he knew things like he, he knew tangible things. Oh, like street smarts. Like he was, yeah. Street like, first was book smart. Yeah. Yeah. So he, but he also was, uh, he also had to have been very charismatic in order to attract people. Right. Ted Bundy had, the, had the looks, had the charisma, had the personality, like, I think that you combine some of those things and it really creates a dangerous potion for these people who have ulterior motives or, or these dark motives. And so when, as we're getting ready to talk about some of these worst serial killers that we're getting into here, part of my list has to do with these people who came across as either influential, like they, or they were able to manipulate the situation in an influential way. Or they came across as this very approachable individual, and unfortunately, the people who approached them fell victim to their ploys. But for your list, do you kind of have something similar, or what were you going for? So I ranked them based on who I know, and I I did three. I'm just going to be up front. And it was the three that I'm most, the ones I know the most about. Okay. Like, you know, I'm familiar with them. I've watched documentaries on them. I followed the story more. Um, and if I did it, it would be Bundy is Bundy is the most known for me, but he's at the bottom. Then I would put okay. Gacy, John Wayne Gacy second, because I think what he did was appalling, but he was more like in that narcissistic political realm in the sense, like, mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, I, I'm not saying he wasn't crazy, but you know, Dahmer's the worst to me in, in my opinion, from what I know, like the stuff he did, like drilling people in the head, trying to make a zombie, keeping them because he was in love with them and stuff. I think right. a lot, of, a lot of these cause like Zodiac killer did a lot. I mean, he's, do I think he killed as many people as he says he does, even though he was never caught? No. I, right. I think he took credit for a lot of things, but also like he just went and killed random fucking people. Uh, right. But like to me, Dahmer would be the top. And it's not just because it's fresh in my mind. It's just the fact of knowing that you could live in a house or an apartment with that stench and be OK with it. Oh, and well, and yeah. that's the same thing about Gacy, too, because he would he would bury the bury the guys under his under his uh, house, under his, the foundation in his house. Yeah. Like I, I, dude, I've smelled rotting flesh before. That is not, that's not a smell that you want to be around at all. Like I did think that, that actually, and going back to the Dahmer Netflix series, there was actually a point of it that they were trying to say that there's a human reaction to the, the smell of decaying flesh. That's like Mm -hmm. innate. It's built into you. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah, I think that Dahmer's, I think that Dahmer is one of the worst ones for sure. I didn't want to put him on the list just because we were talking about him tonight. Okay. So um, I, like you, I do have Bundy. Um, Bundy came across as this very influential or very charismatic person. Um, a lot's talked about about his looks his, and his personality. And I kind of feel like, you know, how like cobras or, or certain snakes, they'll like do a dance to like... Mm-hmm mesmerize their their prey and that at, that's the point that they take it i kind of feel like that's the human version of of that is with ted bundy just because he he did have the looks he did have the charisma he did have everything about that um terrible human like all i want to i want to mm-hmm. preface all of these people are terrible humans um and should absolutely be prosecuted to the to the farthest end of the laws and and etc as they they all have in this scenario but um, but Ted Bundy is my number three, so I agree with you there. Um, like you, I also picked Gacy. Um, Gacy was very much a he was an influential guy. He he went into 
circles of poli- or circles of of other influential people. I think he was a campaign manager. Or he worked on. I mean, he was on the Democratic of, Party of something. Yeah. Yeah, he was like the he was like a, a fundraiser or something for that. He was also a local business owner. He hired a lot of uh, young men uh, to to do that. I think he was a contractor of some kind, and he was also a clown that went and performed at children's events. Mm-hmm. And like you think about all of this and just it's so grotesque and it's so nasty. Um, but the number one for me has got to be the BTK. And yep. the reason why BTK is because he he went on this killing spree, right? They hadn't found him at all. And he goes, what, 20 years? I think mm-hmm. it was. And he finally writes a letter to the police and they crack the case. And turns out he's like a deacon in the church and he's this yeah. this reputable guy and I, I think that, you know, as we're talking about some of these people and just people in general, I mean, everybody has a front, right? Like everybody puts on a front. Their Facebook page only shows you what the Facebook page wants you to show. The Instagram photos only show you what they what they want you to show. What's behind those closed doors, though, is a little bit more intricate. And in these scenarios, these guys are vile, vile humans, and they did some terrible, disastrous things. And I'm kind of happy we're grazing over the whole actual serial killers things because i do kind of feel pretty pretty nasty like I'm, i i don't i don't want to come across that we're celebrating these guys at all no and and i think that's the thing about this list too is i could put any of them up there and have a have a case for it uh that's why i just went with what I'm, what I'm familiar with i've actually learned a lot more about them i've gotten into it more just because i think as a as a father and an adult and and i like to learn it's like i just want to know what goes through their mind like I've never been somebody yeah. that's like, oh, I want to. I never was never really into like watching Faces of Death and seeing that type of stuff. I don't see the right. point. Right. Um. So yeah, that was for me. I mean, let's get into something. I guess. I, I guess the hard way to put it is the funner side of it, like the fictional, fictional, the more serial killer side. Yeah, let's do that. So let me ask you this before we actually break down some of our fictional serial killers here. Do you prefer to watch a serial killer entertainment show? Or do you prefer to watch a serial killer entertainment film? Movie. You're more movie? Movie because the character I think can, the ones I pick can act it out better. Um, Okay. I think with a show, especially because, you know, um, it gets drawn out too long. It's either too long or too short or, or slow burn or something like that. I don't know. A movie portrayal is fun. I think it's also because it's fantastical to me. I think when they do a show, they try to make it too realistic. Does that make sense? Okay. Not saying that yeah. these aren't realistic, but there's that fantastical nonsense with it, if it makes sense. Like right. that in a movie in an hour and a half, you're like, oh, yeah, they could just make him crazy at the end or Inception. Like he traveled through time or you know what I mean? Or he's right. a nightmare guy with, with claw hands, you know, stuff like that. So that that's how I look at it. What about you? Um, I actually prefer the, the series because okay. I want them to explore it more. So, for instance, this may be on your list. It may not be on your list. Uh, but Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter is such a great character portrayed by Anthony Hopkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, phenomenal story all through all the films, right? But I really enjoyed the television series Hannibal. I really liked that, and I thought that that was a really good way to explore the character over time. Um, the other the other thing that I like about the entertainment side is that you can build a bond with the serial killer character without condoning their, their ways. Right. So like you just like the character, like a lot of people love Dexter. I've still never seen Dexter, but a lot of people can relate to Dexter. Right. And so I Mm -hmm. think that there's, or not relate to him per se, but at least like him. And so I think that there is um, something to that where you can break it down that way and, and have it entertain you while also having a fondness for the character. I guess. Does that make sense? No, it does. So I don't have these ranked one through three, but I do have three. Do you have three on this one as well? So I actually have five and I have two honorable mentions. And and the reason is, is two of them are sort of just, well, one is a film that I actually just, I have a soft spot for and I love, and I love the actor. And it's, uh, I'm going to probably butcher your name, but it's Carl Starger, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. When he played in the movie The Cell, I yep, thought that, that was, was a great very one. good stylized killer character. Uh, the other one, Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons, because technically okay. he's listed as a fictional murderer. So I was okay. like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, not, not nothing too deep there, but Sideshow Bob's a good character. So I didn't know how many you were bringing to the table. So I actually have enough for five and two honorable mentions. Um, my honorable mention would actually be Vincent Vega 
John uh, John Travolta's character from Pulp Fiction. Okay, I liked him a lot in the in the film when he's talking about the Royale with cheese versus the quarter pounder when they're when he accidentally shoots the guy in the back seat. I just thought it was really funny. I think the character's cool, um, and so that that's one for me. And then I also chose Mickey Knox from Natural Born Killers. Okay. I, Natural Born Killers, you have the husband and the wife, right? But I felt like Woody Harrelson's character, I liked that one more. And so rather than picking two, I wanted to choose Woody Harrelson's character of Mickey Knox. So those are my okay. honorable mentions. Nice. So let's the mine's in mine's in order. So I okay. guess I'll start with I'll start with my number five, and it's it's Freddy Krueger. And the reason is it's supernatural. He is a murderer. I like the storyline. If I if I we did this last year during Halloween where we ranked the the three bad bad guys, um, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Myers, him and Jason, and Freddy Krueger's my top guy. The fire hole, that whole aspect, um, just the character build. So I mean, if I was gonna go with a serial killer that's of the supernatural and that that fantastical realm, he's on there. Um, right. So that would be my number five because the backstory too. I know they tried to explore it in the newest film, which wasn't great, but they tried to explore it, and it was mm-hmm. interesting to me still. But even the funny thing is they tried to explore it more than the original film and the original film did a better job telling it, if that makes sense. Sure. Sure. Um, so my number five is Joe Carroll. Joe Carroll was on a show called the following, the following stars, Kevin Bacon. And it was, I believe it was on Fox. It went for three seasons. I want, I, I think it went for three seasons before it was canceled. That first season uh, that involved Joe Carroll Holy Mm -hmm. shit balls. He was psychotic. He created his own cult. Like he had all of these people there with him committing murders. Um, And of course, Kevin Bacon's character was really, really phenomenal in that, in that show. But Joe Carroll was demented. My dude, like he was, he, it seemed like there was no limits for him. And it also seemed like he was willing to do anything as far as haunting. uh, I want to say it was Kevin Bacon's ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend or fiance, something like that. Like they had a, if I remember it correctly, they had a child together and that's what kind of started all of this. But um, yeah, Joe Carroll was a, was a great character. He candidly, he kind of reminded me of purple man off of uh, Jessica Jones. uh, Yeah. Yeah. So that would be my number five. What's your number four? John Doe from seven. I love the movie seven. Kevin Spacey. Um, I, yeah, I think he did it. Kevin Spacey is an amazing actor. I think he did a good job. I think it was just because the, the cleverness of the kills, right. Related to the seven deadly sins, um, killing Brad, Pitt, like the, the maniacal way he went about killing a Brad Pitt's wife, um, Mm -hmm. and not caring. Um, you don't see much of him in the film, you know what I mean? But right. A good enough job. Um, so yeah, that would be the next one that I'd say is on the list. Okay. So my next one, and I don't remember if you've seen this or not, um, but the it's a television show on Netflix called You. Have you watched no. that? No. Okay. The The main character, his name is Joe Goldberg. Um, ultimately, he stalks women um, primarily, and he's kind of compulsive in a sense, like he... He, he murders him by accident kind of thing, like, but he murders multiple people throughout this television series. But he's an actor that you actually want to watch. And when you're watching you, he narrates his thoughts. So as he's going through these different scenes, you're, you're hearing the narration of his thoughts, which is almost like you're thinking his thoughts. So it kind okay. of puts you into that whole thing. So you really understand his character. Um, so Joe Goldberg is, is, uh, is my number four. Uh, great series. I, I'm not sure if it's your cup of tea, but the, there's a lot of people that I've referred the series to that really enjoy it. Um, but just try to watch it. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. I know my wife has, so that might be have, have to be something she'll rewatch with me because uh, we do that a lot too. I don't know if you do where you rewatch a show to see if you missed anything or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number three, who do you got? So number three, I've got um, Anton Chigger, I believe okay. is how you pronounce his name from No Country for Old Men. Um, he, this guy was a silent predator in this film. He was violent. He was scary. Uh, not like, not, not shock scare, but like, you know, it was a, it was a thriller. It was, it was, um, just shocking in certain ways on how he would come about it. Great character, great portrayal, 
really, really enjoyed it. No Country for Old Men it was a remake of, of I believe it was No Country for Old Men as well, but this one was mm -hmm. produced by Clint Eastwood. Um, just a, or no, this one, I'm sorry, this one may have been the Coen Brothers, but regardless, it's a great film. I, I Have you watched it, No Country for Old Men? Oh, I love that movie. Good movie. Yeah, it's a great film. Great film. So that's going to be my number three. What about you? Hannibal Lecter. Um, one Hannibal's of the number most three. Number three, one of the most iconic, there's reasons behind it. One of the most iconic murderers ever. Um, hell, you know, great acting, great portrayal. I think the hard thing for me is there's so many people that have portrayed him in different lights. And so, yeah. of course, the Anthony Hopkins is my top one. Um, I did like the movie Red Dragon. I thought it was interesting, but it's almost like, uh, and I'm not trying to compare it like a theory of two thing, but like angels and demons compared to the Da Vinci Code. Like, you know okay. what I mean? I like Silence yeah. of the Lamb over Red Dragon, even though I enjoy Red Dragon. Um, but Hannibal Lecter, yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. He, the funny thing is he's one of the most iconic murderers and you don't really see until the end, like his murders, right? You see him right. with the cops and then they do the right. things later and you see him eating a brain and stuff on the, but it's one of those things like he just did it so well and the face mask and everything that he wore is like, it's just a, a thing in pop culture. Yeah. So that's yeah. why still not my number one for other reasons, but number three for me, yeah. Okay, well, well, he is definitely uh, in my top, um, but my number, am I on number two now? You're on number two. My number two is John Doe. Okay. I, I John Doe for all the things that you said. Um, I really had, a, so I really had a struggle real quick uh, with putting in Patrick Bateman, which is Christian Bale's character in uh, uh, American Psycho. Is it American mm -hmm. Psycho? Um. Yeah. I love that performance, love the character. He would be a traditional honorable mention for me. But for all the things that you said about Seven and the manner of the kills and the way that they were rationalized and the character that Kevin Kevin Spacey portrayed, John Doe was incredible, and he's my number two. Well, it's funny because you actually mentioned my number two, and it's Patrick Bateman. And okay. the reason is, is I thought it was a clever way um, – one of my favorite bands I've talked about forever is ice nine kills. They did um, a new song yeah. um, and they did that scene where he's listening to Huey Lewis in the news. Right. And he's bashing the guy's brains in, but um, in a sick way, B word when I've, I've worked in the corporate world for a long time, there are moments mm -hmm. you're like, yep, yep. I hate people that hand me their business card and talk about it and like stuff like that. There's yep. moments where you're like, yep, I get it. Not that yep. I want to act on it or do it, but I, I totally understand um, and I just thought he did a great job. And it's, it's, well, I guess it's, it's that, how to put it, like relatability <laughs> in the sense yeah. of like, it's like he's an American psycho. Like it, just the vainness. I, I think the most enjoyable thing about him in the movie was just listening to his vanity and seeing how avant garde and crazy it was. And you're just like, this is so stupid, but I get it. Like when he's talking about the kelp face wash and you're just like, he's crazy and he's going to yeah. murder people. But like yeah. he's going through his daily routine. You're like, OK, like, you know what I mean? And it's just I don't yeah. know. It just it was so interesting to me. No, I completely agree. I completely agree with you. Uh, there's there's another one that would have made a traditional honorable mention. And it actually comes from uh, the Silence of the Lambs. And it was Buffalo Bill, uh, the guy who would who would uh, rub the lotion in the skin. Like I really like he almost made my top five as well. But my number one is actually Hannibal Lecter. Okay. I too have to go with Anthony Hopkins. Um, but the television version of um of Hannibal was also incredible. And right now I'm I'm missing the guy's name who played Hannibal. Um, but he uh Anthony Hopkins, his portrayal, the way that he would talk to Clarice, the hello, Clarice. And the way that he would do like all of that sort of stuff, or uh, he would do the like he just slurp at times, like he embodied that character. Like when I think of Anthony Hopkins, I think of Hannibal Lecter. Like that's the okay. first character I think of Anthony Hopkins with. And so the TV one's one. Mads Mickelson, right? Mads Mickelson. That's it. Okay. Yes, correct. Just making sure. Number one for me is Dexter. And the reason that I had a hard time putting him, I, I kept going back to him as number one. And I guess the main reason is he's the only serial killer I root for. Okay. And because you've never watched the show and I'll explain this. Not. Like 
the show now mind you the ending sucked and they didn't the, then they did the first blood and it was like they were trying to re retract their original ending and redo it and they they cleaned it up a little more and it was a decent decent comeback but um it was a show that went on too long mm-hmm. like it probably could have ended a few seasons he also interacted with other serial killers on the show uh, yeah. which was also interesting but essentially, he's a serial killer sort of doing it for good. So you root for him, but you're also just like you're still a serial killer. And you get to watch the character's portrayal of the back and forth on that, too. Like, oh, how do I go through this? And so for me, it was he's the only serial killer where I'm going, yes, please kill all these people. And that's yeah. why he's number one. And it, it's weird to me because, I mean, it's when you do say people, it's the relatability. It's like he's almost like a superhero in a bad way, like an antihero and. I'm, you know, we're nerds. We love to marvel out and do that stuff. So to me, he's number one. He is, from what I understand, and I haven't watched Dexter. I was going to watch Dexter until it ended. And everybody said that it was a bad ending. And that was yeah. the point that I went, I don't know if I want to watch this. But from what my understanding is, is he is like, Dexter is to being a serial killer what Walter White is to being a meth dealer. Exactly. Like you You root for these people embeddedly within yourself because you want them to succeed at what they're doing because at the end of the day regardless of their sins you're sitting here going i root for you because i want what's best for you but you keep breaking my heart because you keep doing all the wrong things am am i correct on that you you are i mean the problem the difference is i'll say this is walter white turned heel yeah in the show and Dexter, I never really felt I, there were moments Dexter had where it's like, he's almost going to turn heel and it just felt like lazy writing where they're like, okay, make him go back and forth or this and that, or feel bad. But I mean, Walter white in breaking bad had a full, like fuck you moment and just went full bore. And to me, Dexter never really had that. There was always that internal pull of like, okay, I can't right. go. F- I can, I could go that way, but I'm not gonna, um, but the other thing was, is the difference between him and Walter White is I felt like near the end of that show, and I'm not trying to get too much into that, but he, as I said, he had that fuck you moment, but it was also the fact mm-hmm. like he didn't care if he got caught at some point. Right. And Dexter, no matter what, always had that fear. Gotcha. And gotcha. so that, that's the difference there. Um, but you know, I agree with you on the rooting and thing and stuff. I mean, the other thing I'll spoil for you on Dexter is his dad who helped him out was a cop. And, you know, Dexter becomes a cop, but that was the big thing. He almost has that like Jedi master, like his dad's ghost coming and talks to him and stuff like that. So that's a weird thing where it's like he he gave him the rules of why he can kill and how he can kill and how to get away with it. So there's always that like mentorship too. that's different. You know what I mean? So, oh, OK, OK, that I, it, I will say this. B-word, it is worth the watch, even though the ending sucked. It's a great show. And I'll tell you right now, my favorite season is with John Lovitz. Or not John Lovett, sorry. I'm who played from um I, I Third know Rock from the Sun. About. Um Jonathan Lithgow. The same guy. John yeah. Yeah. Um when he's a serial killer, one of the greatest portrayals too. That's what just, I heard. That's what I heard. Just amazing. But it's yeah. a good show. Definitely check it out, buddy. All right. Well, cool. Well, I I mean, I think that this was a good conversation episode, but I gotta be honest with you, man. I don't really like the subject matter. <laughs> No, <laughs> so no, it, I'm, I'm kind of glad we're done. Like we, we didn't choose to do this because, you know, of you know, spooktober or anything like that. Like we're really not doing a whole lot uh, on the Halloween side for spooky season uh, for, for our rundowns coming up, but we do have a couple good guests coming up. And I do think that, that uh, our audience will enjoy the content regardless of the month. But yeah, man, I'm kind of happy to be done with the whole serial killer thing. Oh, me too. It was, uh, uh, to be honest, B-word, it was, it was frustrating subject matter in the sense of like, uh, how to word it and do it, but also just because the the technological night was a little frustrating, but we made it through, bro. We made it through. We we made it through. Well, with that, my dude, what do you got for us? Thanks for all the dirty talk. Come back and get sanitized. Bleach Bros Podcast is proud to align itself with Jerky Pro, a beef jerky manufacturer established by military and paramilitary veterans. Available in three ounce or one pound bags with great flavors such as honey glazed, teriyaki, red hot, apple cinnamon, original, peppered, sweet barbecue, and if you're ballsy enough, nuclear. Be sure to use our promo code to get some of the best jerky on the market. 
Use Bleach Bros 5, all lowercase, to take advantage of this offer today.